These two, coupled with your character's ascendant, can give you a really good picture of what that character might look like. Spare Room with Karen Terry. Hey y'all, and welcome to Spare Room. I'm Karen Terry, and today we're going to talk about using astrology for character creation. Part of my 2020 plan for my channel is to do a whole series where we talk about astrological signs and how we can use those for character creation. But before we get to that, we all have to get on the same page about how astrology works and why this is a useful tool for writers creating characters. So most people know what their sign is. For example, I'm a Cancer. And what that means is that the sun was in the zodiac sign Cancer on the day that I was born. If we think of space as what's happening around the Earth, then we can map that on a two-dimensional plane with Earth at the time that you were born in the center. This line here to the left is the time and date that you were born. So I was born on July 22nd, 1986. You also need to know the time of your birth, as well as the location that you were born, because the time of your birth, as well as the longitude and the latitude of the location that you were born, will change various things. Now, luckily, you don't actually have to do any of the calculations. There are tons of websites that will do that for you, and I'm, of course, going to link some down in the description. So once we have all of that information, we'll need to figure out where the various zodiac signs were in the sky at the time of your birth. All the zodiac signs are constellations in the sky. A constellation we tend to think of as a picture in the sky, but that's not really what a constellation is in terms of astronomy or astrology. In both, a constellation is an area of the sky. Think of it like a town or a city. A city isn't these buildings. A city is an area of land. So we'll need to figure out what zodiac sign was on the horizon at the time that I was born. Now, I happen to know in my case, this is Virgo, and this is your rising or ascendant sign. Your ascendant represents how you present to the outside world. For example, this could manifest in your style of dress or your daily choices or your surface level mannerisms. Now, in 2020, for the subsequent videos for this, we're going to go into exactly how each sign reacts when it's in certain positions. But for now, we just want to get an understanding of how this chart works. So we know in my case, Virgo occupies this space, and we can go around the chart in a circle and plot where the rest of the signs go. Now we know the Ascendant, the Midhaven, the Descendant, and the Imam Coeli. Most people really just talk about the Ascendant though, so we're going to skip over those other three, but they are really interesting, and I do recommend Googling from further reading if you're interested. Okay, so now we know when I was born and where all of the signs are relevant to Earth at that time. So let's circle back to Cancer. How do we figure out that? So that is where the Sun was at the time of my birth. So astronomy enthusiasts out there, when do we actually see Cancer in the sky? It's from late fall to early spring, right? So that's funny because I'm a Cancer, but you can't see Cancer in the sky in the summer. That's because Cancer is in the sky when the sun is fully up and therefore the sun's light is blocking you from seeing it. So what sign you are is the placement of the sun at the time of your birth. And because the earth moves around the sun, we appear to have the sun move through the sky, and it also appears then to move through the constellations. Now, exactly how zodiac signs are calculated doesn't match one-to-one -to, -one to what we see in the sky. There are lots of historical reasons for this, but suffice it to say, astrology is not scientific. But we're going to use it for character creation, so we don't care about that. Now, using this same logic, we can plot where all of the other planets and celestial objects were at the time of our birth. Then we know what sign each of those objects occupied at that time. This is a natal chart, which is the basis of astrology, and basically what it shows is the placement of all of the planets and other celestial objects at a certain point in time, typically the time of someone's birth. Now, there's a lot here. These numbers that I didn't talk about are houses, for example. 
Also, how each of these planets relates to each other says something, but I don't want to overwhelm you guys. So what we're going to spend the rest of the video doing is describing what each planet on this chart represents. And that way in subsequent videos, when we're talking about Aquarius, we already have an idea of what Mars and Venus and all of these planets mean. So we can say Aquarius in Venus is this, and you already are understanding a little bit what I'm talking about. If you would eventually like me to do videos on the houses or aspects, let me know down below. I'd be happy to do them if there's interest. So I know the sun is not a planet, but for the purposes of this chart, it's two dimensional with earth in the center and all of the things around it are called planets. So for the purposes of this video, the sun is a planet. Okay. Okay. Where the sun is in your chart represents your primary sense of self. This is what drives you and your central instincts. This is why when someone asks you, what's your sign, they're talking about your sun sign. Where the moon is in your chart represents your inner world. This is your emotional self, how you practice self-care, your private mind, and what makes you vulnerable. These two, coupled with your character's ascendant, can give you a really good picture of what that character might look like. And these three alone give you 12 to the power of three different combinations. That is 1,728 different personalities that you could apply to a character. Wow. And that's why I love astrology. It gives us a framework to show how unique each person can be. And those signs aren't even the end. We can keep going. Where Mercury is in your chart represents how you communicate. This is how you speak, how you problem solve, or even how fast you text back. Where Venus is in your chart represents your desires. This is how you love, how you flirt, or what you want in life. Where Mars is in your chart represents what drives you. This is your sense of determination, what sorts of things motivate you, or how you respond to confrontation and challenges. Where Jupiter is in your chart is how you grow and expand. What is your general outlook on life? How do you like to gain new knowledge? What things and experiences are you enthusiastic about? Where Saturn is in your chart represents the nature of your restraints and inhibitions. What is your routine? Do you have a five-year plan? How disciplined are you? These are all called personal planets. That's because they occupy each sign for a relatively short amount of time. But as we move outward, of course, the planets move through the signs more slowly. The longest personal planet, Saturn, stays in a sign for about three years before moving on to the next sign. However, Uranus, the first planet that's not a personal planet, stays in a sign for a whopping seven years before it moves on to the next sign. This means the placement of Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto have a lot less to do with you individually and more to do with the state of the world around you at the time that you were born. Where Uranus is in your chart represents innovation and rebellion. What are you and your peers' idea of a better world? Where Neptune is in your chart represents fantasies and imagination. What is the spirituality of your peers? And conversely, what gives your generation a reality check? Where Pluto is in your chart represents transformation. This is how you and your peers balance power dynamics. How you destroy and or rebuild structures around you. And how you decide what to let go of in society. Now, there are lots of other things that can be placed on a natal chart, such as comets, asteroids, and Kuiper Belt objects. The objects that we discussed in this video, though, are what we're going to be focusing on in subsequent videos. So what we're going to do in 2020 is throughout the year, we're going to pick a sign and we're going to go through what each of these planets do when they're in that sign. And you can use all of this information for character creation ideas. I personally find it super useful to figure out the ascendant, the sun, and the moon sign for a character. It gives me enough information without feeling overwhelming when you're trying to build a dynamic, living, breathing character. So are you guys excited about this? Do you guys already do this? If not, are you interested in getting started as we kind of go through each sign next year? Let me know down below. 
Thank you so much for watching. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that bell, whatever engagement features YouTube adds in the future, do it all. And an extra special thank you to my patrons, which you're seeing on the screen right now. If you would like to be included or get other fun perks, link to my Patreon in the description down below. And as always, don't forget to make it a great day. And happy holidays.